This is a dolmen type of tea with a twisted cuff and a white binding here and I was really excited to try this method. I think you'll really like it and I'm gonna be using that on other projects in the future. It's always amazing to try something new. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing. And today we have some neat sewing to see, some new techniques, things that I was excited to try. It's always good to try something new. Maybe if you saw the previous video about the sporty lounge skirt from Pattern Emporium, you would know that this was a pattern release that was not on its own, it had a companion, and that was the Carefree Tea also from Pattern Emporium. This one is a super easy to sew pattern. Depending on the size that you're making, you might be able to get it in one yard and it would take roughly about an hour, maybe less. I think it takes me a little bit longer because I do a lot of things that maybe a lot of people don't do, but still it's a really, really fast and satisfying make, really easy to fit also. The fit is meant to be oversized, so I'm not saying it's relaxed fit, I'm saying it's oversized fit, but we'll touch on that in a little bit. There's only a few seams, only four pattern pieces, shoulder seams, side seams, the sleeves are included in the front and back because they are dolman type sleeves. And now the lovely details start at the neckline. You can sew one that is a little deeper. It's not too deep though. And then there's a higher crew neck. And the way that you finish this neckline is with a wide binding. So I've definitely done this technique before, but with really narrow binding, narrow seam allowances. So I have never actually done it using a wide method. And I had seen this before in the timeout tank from Pattern Emporium also. So I've always been curious to try this method. It's not that I haven't done it before. I just haven't done it with such a wide seam allowance. So it was one of the things that got me excited to try this pattern because I'm always trying to add different types of techniques to my arsenal. When I like something, I tend to adopt it and use it on other patterns and other things that I'm sewing. Also, there's little cuffs. So you can sew two types. One is a regular cuff, just a rectangle that you sew and you fold up. But the other one has a twist on it and it's literally called a twist cuff. And that is also something different that I wanted to try out and thought it was something special that you can find on a style like this that looks a little bit more simple, but is definitely not simple. The hem is curved, a tiny bit shorter at the front than at the back and lengths you can choose between three of them. When Pattern Emporium has a new pattern release, they don't just put that pattern on sale. Well, in this case, they've released two patterns in the same day, the sporty lounge skirt and the carefree tee. There are other patterns that can go with these. Those are also on sale and it's quite a sizable list this time. In the description box, I'll leave you a link that takes you directly to the page where you can see what the patterns are, the ones that are 15% off. That goes through Monday, the 4th of April, noon, Australian Eastern Standard Time. That in the US is equivalent to Sunday night-ish. So you have about a day to have a look there if you want to get some of these patterns. Of course, my affiliate link is also linked down below if you would like to get your patterns through there. That is one way that you can support the channel, the work that I do here, without it costing you anything extra. And you'll see the discount pop up when you are checking out. Hope you have fun looking, there's so many patterns there. I already have videos for these four patterns that you can see there including the latest one, which was the sporty lounge skirt that you've seen in the last video. For the carefree tee, you need neat fabrics that could be light to medium weight. They don't need to stretch that much. And actually you can use the ones that only stretch horizontally. If you don't have any vertical stretch, don't worry, it'll work because the fit is just so generous. So you don't need that vertical stretch for fitting purposes. Even if this is a dolmen, it's still nice and roomy. Sometimes when you have knits that don't stretch vertically, it's really hard to find projects that will work. This one will. So there's a huge variety here, you know, the typical rayon or bamboo or modal type spandex materials that are really light. Double brush poly, single brush poly, ITY. French terry, cotton lycra, rib knit, even like a mesh you could use, maybe even some light sweatshirting. Just for my personal preference, I wouldn't want to use something too heavy. You know, dolman sleeves have this type of shape here, so having a few folds here is expected. Doing it with a heavy fabric, I think would accentuate that. I would just stay with the light to medium weight fabrics, especially ones that drape. So I mentioned cotton lycra because you can do it with cotton lycra. I just wouldn't make it with cotton lycra because even if you find a lightweight one it'll still be boxy and structured 
not my jam. I've chosen really special fabrics to make my two versions. Here you can see a really nice knit that has embroidery. It looks like broderie and glaze that you find in woven cotton fabrics usually, but this is a knit. I was able to find this burgundy color that is so rich and it's so nice. This one has more stretch horizontally. Vertically, it's a little bit more stable, but it definitely has vertical stretch also. Lovely drape, it's super soft. It is a little fiddly to work with, but it's totally worth it. And the second fabric I have is a very, very lightweight athletic knit. I'll put the composition on the screen here because I was able to find it where I bought it. It is a specialty fabric. The print and the drape and the feel is so nice. I decided to make a version out of that. I was super happy with my fabric choices and just excited to get going, you know? Sizing goes from sizes 4 to 30 Australian. Now, when you look at measurement charts, it's more similar to UK sizing. If you are used to using US sizing, don't get confused with that. Don't get hung up on that. It's just numbers. It's just charts and different designers all over the world use their own sizes. This is Australian. At size 30 Australian sizing, the hips go up to a 58 and 3 quarter inch. Now this pattern I mentioned is oversized and by oversized I mean at the bust there's 10 inches of ease and at the hips about 7 to 9 inches of ease. So that's a quite generous fit and even in the pattern instructions it just says size down one if you want a closer fit choose your base size based on your high bust so that your neckline fits properly. So looking at my measurements, I'm an 18 Australian, but I cut out and sewed a size 16 Australian. And maybe I could have gotten away with a 14, but I think a 16 is okay, it's fine. One size down is perfectly fine. There are three lengths here and you'll find them all on the same pattern piece. So you'll find three different cut lines. The difference between them is about two inches. So I've made one at the shorter length and the second one at the next length. The longest length I don't think I'll ever use, I just think it's too long. It just goes into tunic territories and I don't wear tunics. I've made zero fitting adjustments, I've just cut out my size, cut out my fabric, sewed it up. It's really relaxing in that way knowing you don't have to worry that much about fit. About the sewing, you are sewing your seams with a quarter inch seam allowance. It's been designed to be sewn directly on the serger so you would be sewing there without cutting anything away, just being careful with the blade. For my embroidered knit version, it was super slippery. I decided to use my rotary cutter because I think I can get a more precise result rather than using scissors. And there are a few marks that you need to put there on the pattern, especially for the sleeve section. And I've just used a regular pencil dipped in water, coloring pencil, that's how I draw my notches. I don't cut into fabric. So that's sort of preparation. And in the sewing segment that comes next, you'll see a lot of general construction, but mainly focusing on that wide neckline binding, which is a super cool technique and that I've really enjoyed. And also the twist in the cuff. I think that's interesting and different. Don't you think this is starting to I have a meter of fabric here, just over a yard, and because both pieces are cut on the fold, I've got the selvages there in the center, so I've got a fold here and a fold there. Once I cut my pieces from all that's left over, I'll be able to get my cuff and neckband. I love patterns that I can make with small amounts. You only need four pieces to make the carefree tee. Both the front and the back are cut on the fold. I have the lower neckline option. There is a higher one, a crew neckline. Grown on dolman type of sleeves. This is the binding that's gonna go on the neckline. It's a wider type of binding and this is a twist cuff. You can see it's narrower there, narrower there and a little bit wider in the center right there. So it's not the typical cuff. It's got a little twist on it. I think it's going to be really fun to put together. This is the back and I just want to show you here on the sleeve area there are two notches. That's just to make the difference with the cuff because on the cuff piece you also find two notches there. Okay, I think up closer you can see them. So those are the two notches on the sleeve area and then on the cuff also. So make sure you mark those so that you end up with the right side of the cuff on the right side of the sleeve and not put this on the front. This is super easy to sew. I'm just going to get the main seams done, two shoulder seams, two side seams, and then I can start working on this neckline binding. This is a needle I'm using, Schmidt's jersey number 90. This fabric is not too lightweight, so 90 is fine. 
This is my neck binding piece. It's quite wider than the typical binding and I've done this exact technique but using tiny seam allowances. So this will just be slightly different. We're just gonna sew these short ends. I'm going to use a quarter inch presser foot. The seam allowance is a quarter of an inch and that just helps. I'm just using a straight stitch. Maybe if you've been watching closely, <laughs> you can see that one of the ends has been surged and the other one isn't. So I have a raw edge and a finished edge. The finished edge is what's going to be inside and this is what we're going to sew onto the neckline now. So just like any other band or binding, we are just going to put pins and mark quarter points. Okay, here we have the neckline. I have already marked the center front and the center back over here. And on the pattern, you already had a mark right there. It's sort of beyond the shoulder seam coming towards the front because that is our quarter point. So it's given to you in the pattern, which is great. Now never assume that a quarter point is the shoulder seam. Rarely ever going to be a quarter point unless the back neckline was also deep and exactly the same as the front. So the shoulder point is never a reference. It's always coming forward towards the front. So there we have them. Now I'm just going to take the center front pin and match it up here. I'm going to leave the seam of the binding towards the back. And you can see that this pin will match this one and that the binding is slightly shorter, but not terribly so. So you will have to stretch to match, but this is what you do with any binding or any band. The concept is the same. And here is the seam of my binding. I like doing it with the sewing machine because I can have it flat and open the seam up. If you serge it, you just have one bulky thing to one side and I never like that. Now what we need to do is baste the binding to the neckline with a long stitch length and only at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It's not the definite stitch that's going to put this together but it's going to help. Choose any of these quarter points to start. I'm just going to start at the back. You're going to stretch only the binding slightly to match the neckline underneath. Don't stretch the neckline. Now we are going to sew the binding on with a definite stitch. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. Very shallow, it looks almost like a straight stitch. Almost straight, it's, the width is tiny. And then the length, I'll just use three. This is what I usually use. Okay, what happens now is that we sew another row, but this time from the edge of the fabric, we are sewing at three quarters of an inch. And I do have a mark here on my metal plate. It's that one right there. And I'm gonna be careful also to make it sure everything is nice and neat as I sew that I don't get any puckers from underneath. That's why the basting stitch helped to get the quarters divided nicely. I'm gonna make sure also that my shoulder seam is going to the back always when I go over it. Make sure you're always using your fingers from your left hand so that you can feel that there's no puckers underneath. It is a little bit fiddlier to sew such a large seam allowance on a curved shape like a neckline so that's why you just need to take it slow. Now that this is sewn it is a good idea to head over to the iron and just give it a good steam. You're gonna get rid of most of the waviness that you've got here since you're sewing a binding that's smaller than the neckline. Also it is optional to remove that first basting stitch. It's gonna be hidden away. It won't bother me so I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay, so that is how the binding looks. We still have this flopping around. This is the edge that I searched. And now all we need to do is wrap this around the seam allowance, keeping the seam allowance there. And that is what is going to finish the neckline. And then we have this edge in here that is just gonna cover that seam there. I don't know if you can guess what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm going to hand baste this down so that I know everything is gonna be caught on the other side. Okay, everything has been pinned. I've taken my time. I already went and pressed it. It looks quite smooth. It looks really nice. You can see that I've pinned right where I intend to top stitch and I made sure I'm catching a little bit on the other side. That's my first quality check. And now the second check and uh, where I'm gonna finalize is with the needle and thread where I'm just gonna sew this together. And with each stitch, like every time I put my needle through, I'm looking at where it's coming at the back, make sure I'm catching the binding, come out this side, make sure I'm catching the binding, and I'll just be going like this, like this, like this the whole time. And that is 100% gonna give me a good result where everything has been caught at the back. Here it is, hand basted. I'm very confident I'm gonna have a good result now. Now you can top stitch this many ways, cover stitch, twin needle, zigzag, whatever you would like. I'm just going to use my blind hem presser foot with the needle to the left and that gives me a really clean edge finish. Just 
just whip out these basting stitches and then we can see how neat this is. Look at that, so nice. Everything's being caught on the other side. So it seam gives me peace of mind. You can leave it raw, it's not going to fray, but I just think it looks nice. And that's it, that's the neckline done. I am going to be adopting this method for other projects. I had never done a binding this wide and I see that just taking the proper precautions, you can get a really, really nice result. It's really stable because there are a few layers in here. You have two layers from the binding plus a seam allowance in there. So there's about four layers of fabric here, which makes it really thick and stable and structured. It's not going to gape or look ugly. Very nice. I have the cuff pieces just folded onto themselves, right sides together, the short ends here meeting, and we need to sew these closed. I'll do that with a straight stitch and my quarter inch presser foot. We do the same for both. After we've sewn the seam, we need to fold these wrong sides together now. Your typical cuff would be sewn in the same way, only it would be a rectangle, so it would have the same width here. The difference here is that this one's wider there and narrower there. So this seam will match the seam of the side seam, so under the arm. And up here, you would have had a notch there it is, that will match the shoulder seam. So the notch will be hidden inside, so I'll just make sure to pin there and mark it so I know that it's there, right there. We also had two little notches that will mark where the back is. Here we see the double notch, that means that this cuff will go sewn onto the back part of the sleeve, so I'll put a pin where those two notches are. And now we can put this onto the sleeve. Here's my top, I've got it wrong sides out, and when we slide the cuff inside, that means it's gonna be right sides together. Can see right sides together there. The seam of the cuff, the short end, will match the side seam. And on the cuff, we had marked where the shoulder seam was, so that will match there. And this is where the double notches were, and here is where the double notches are here on the top. So this cuff is going to match this side. The cuff has been made to fit this exactly, so you don't need to stretch the cuff to fit or anything like that. It's going to match one to one. What we have here are three layers of fabric, and all the raw edges need to match up nicely. This fabric is a little bit tricky to work with. With, it just looks slippery and just slides over each other. Okay, there it is. Search that together. I'll just do that off camera and then I'll be back to show you the last step to make the sleeve twist. Before we sort out the cuff, this actually looks really, really nice. If you just wanted to leave it like this, I think it's an option. It will just extend the dolman sleeve and it's a little longer on the top, a little small on the bottom. I think it would be a great look if you just sewed it and left it like that. But we can fold it up. <laughs> At the bottom here, where you have the seam of the cuff and the side seam, what you're gonna do is just fold this up to meet that seam. It's like an inch right there. That is all you need to do at the bottom, that's very easy. And I'm gonna just pin it here so you can see, but I'm gonna just tuck that by hand, easier to, than to go to the machine. And then on the top, where we have the white part, I'm just gonna find my trusty seam gauge. <laughs> I'm gonna measure from this folded edge one inch. So we need to fold this in by one inch. And then from this new fold, we're gonna measure one and a quarter that is roughly there. I'm gonna put this pin on the other side so I can remove it later. <laughs> we have one first fold, one inch. Now the second is at one and a quarter. So when you fold this over, this is gonna meet the seam right there. And this is where I'm also going to tuck by hand, just through there to hold that in place we're going to get this twisted cuff. Now this would be more apparent if you're using a more structured fabric. This one is really floppy. That is supposedly what the twist would look like. Once it's pressed, I think it'll be more noticeable. What I'm going to do is press it and set that sort of crease that you're going to get and then I'm going to give it a hand tack. I also want to show you what I do with the hem and this is standard practice for whatever hem I'm sewing. And 100% if it's a curved hem, I will do this and I'll just fold it up. <laughs> and hand baste it. That way I know that nothing's gonna move, I just cannot stand the sight of pins or clips for this type of thing because your fabric is on the underside touching the feed dog and I need that distance to be equal. I can't really control that with the pins that well because I'm sewing from the right side of the fabric with the twin needles. There's nothing special, I've been asked a lot how come my hems look nice just because I do that. There's nothing really technological, I'm not using any special tool nothing like that. I'm just using a twin needle with a 3.5 stitch length and my twin needle is a 2.5 distance between the needles and I think that works well 90% of the time. I think the only fabrics I have a bit of difficulty still are rayon spandex sometimes. This is my first carefree tee. Now again this is burgundy but you are seeing it red on screen. I promise it's burgundy the same as my sporty lounge skirt. They are actually the same tone and this is a neat 
that looks like a broidery anglaise. It's got embroidery all over it, great stretch. It's super soft, it's amazing, although super fiddly to work with, but it's worth it. I have the lower neckline here. You saw how to sew this binding. I'm really happy with how it turned out and how nice and stable it is. I would always hand baste, you know the drill, you know the way I like it. Now this fabric doesn't press really well at all, so it's really hard to see the detail. What I did there was press the twist, you can see it there. And then where the twist formed, I tacked it with like one or two invisible stitches to help it stay in place. But definitely it's something that you see in person, like when I wear it, I can see it and I really like it. I think anyone that sees it will notice, but it's really hard for the detail to come across on screen. And at the back, you also get a little twist. So I think it's a really lovely detail, something unexpected for a type of garment like this. I think it's amazing. I have a curved hem right there. You can see the front is shorter than the back just by a little bit. Twin needle always works really well. Now there are small openings in here. I'm not concerned about showing tiny dots of skin. I don't think it really offends anyone. And I'm really happy. I mean, this is a solid. It's in the red burgundy tones that I love and the fabric is so nice. So it's special. It's really special. Definitely is not a basic top for me at all. And the fit is so nice. It's so relaxed. Let's see this on paired with my lounge sports skirt that I've shown you in the previous video. They have the same color. They go together perfect. A little bit out there, you know, all in red, monochrome chromatic but red is my color so why not i would wear it and i wouldn't mind at all going out fully in red <laughs> this is my first carefree tee from pattern emporium i sized down one to a size 16 just because this is an oversized i wanted it a little closer i have a special embroidered knit for you to see up closer the ease at the hips is super comfortable i've used the shorter length option here there are two longer length options there is a curved hem and i've chosen the lower neckline option there's always a higher crew neck see this fabric up closer it is like a broidery anglaise woven fabric but it's actually a neat fabric it's got amazing texture and color it's so soft and the wide binding is a really nice technique for the neckline now this fabric is really floppy so after pressing it and achieving the twist i gave it one or two tiny invisible stitches there by hand to keep the twist in place such a lovely detail i think this monochromatic look is a bit much for a lot of people but not for me it goes perfect over my sporty lounge skirt in the same exact color and i know i'm gonna get a lot of wear out of it I made my second carefree tee with really lightweight active wear material. It's so, so soft and buttery. It's amazing. And it's navy and white. It's got this amazing print. It's got amazing drape. I would equate this similar to ITY, but definitely ITY is not a fabric I want to work out in. It's just not wicking. It's not the same thing, but the feel and the amount of fiddle that it took to work with is the same. I did the same type of neckband, only in this case, I did a top stitch with a twin needle, which I believe is really hard to see on camera. I hope you can see that, but it worked out really, really well. It looks like a cover stitch. It is not a cover stitch, but it sort of looks like it. And because I know the fabric is floppy, I sewed on the, the regular cuff, just the rectangle, no twist, and I just left it. That's it. You know, in, in theory, you should fold it up and give it a tack there but I know the fabric is just gonna collapse and it's always gonna be falling anyway, just because the fabric is like that, so I just decided to leave it. It basically just extends the sleeve and makes it a little bit longer, which is not a bad thing. I know a lot of people want that and I wouldn't mind working out in a longer tee, especially when I'm doing upper body exercises. I'm more conscious of what I'm doing up here. I just wanna be covered up a little bit more, so that's nice. Same size as the red one, only for this one I use the next hem length there's three hem lengths the red one was the shorter one this is the medium one and then there's an even longer one so i made sure this covers my bottom so nice <laughs> there you can see the difference in the hem level from the front and the back this took exactly an hour to sew and you see it styled sort of a sporty way with some navy athletic tights it's ready to wear ready to go to the gym with this and you know if i want to i can style this with a denim skirt and some heels it can go a long way but the material is active wear material, so I can definitely work out in this, get all sweaty and just wash it well and then 
go somewhere nice with it as well. This is my second kefi tea from Pattern Emporium. I also sized down one size just to get a little closer fit, although it's still nice and loose. This is a really lightweight athletic knit fabric that is amazing. The print is so nice and I've paid it over just regular ready to wear leggings in navy. So this is great for working out and I used a regular cuff you'll see up closer. I've got the second length option here so I made sure that this top covers my bottom entirely. I always want that option when I'm wearing at workout leggings because they are so fitted. I have the lower neckline also. I really enjoyed the wide binding method. I think it looks really neat. And for this one I used the twin needle to top stitch it looks very neat fake cover stitch look but it's just done with the sewing machine and because i knew my fabric was really floppy i sewed my regular cuff and just left it i didn't fold it up because i know that if i fold it up it's just gonna flop and fall over it actually extends the sleeve length which is not a bad thing super happy with this version i know i can work out in this but also i could swap the leggings and maybe put a denim skirt and some heels and this this one can go a long way for lots of occasions tops i love them this the one is so special it's so beautiful i mean the color is just everything the binding technique is really nice i had my doubts of how that would actually lie being such a wide binding but it does work you know putting all the pressing sewing the two rows of stitching keeping it all flat it works really well and it worked really well for this really really thin knit also you can have fun top stitching them in different ways you can try different cuffs I think the cuff that would look the best is actually with a more structured fabric like cotton lycra. I think the pressing and the twist would show a lot. But you can always just give it a little tuck and keep it down. I think it looks pretty. This one is just a regular cuff. I, I plan to get a bit more messy with this one when I'm working out. And I just left it. If you want your sleeves to look a little bit longer, you could also do that instead of just folding it up. So there's a lot of possibilities there, lots of length options. Always love the curved hems, I think they're really comfy. Even though the design looks simple, there are details here that are worth it for me and I really enjoyed mine. That's all from me, I hope you have an amazing rest of your weekend. Happy sewing and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.